Okay, so great to see so much interest in HoloLens. So I've got to ask this question. Who's had a HoloLens demo experience? Okay, quite a, quite a few people there. Okay, so I'm Peter Kintis. I work for Microsoft in the UK. And uh, a disclaimer, I'm not on the HoloLens team. I'm not going to speculate about um, you know, the future direction of the product. But what I am going to do is I'm going to tell you what we have now. So the agenda for today is that we're going to talk about mixed reality first and really define what that term means. And then we're going to take a look at the hardware. We'll, we'll run through all the details of the hardware. And uh, then the remaining part of the talk is about the software. So which kind of apps you can build, what you need to build them, which platforms you need. So mixed reality. Now, you could trace this term back to uh, the early 90s, really. And uh, I found a paper online written by some kind of respected researchers in the field. And they sought to define the display technologies that were available at the time. And uh, they came up with this idea of the reality virtuality continuum. OK, so on, on the one hand, on the right hand side, we have physical reality. Right? And that's the stuff that we know. It's made of atoms. You know, we know that this is, this is here because it's real. I can tap it. The technology hasn't gone so far that we can't tell the difference yet. Um, so that's physical reality. On the other end of the continuum, the other, end, other extreme, is virtual reality. Now, virtual reality really seeks to kind of replace all of your senses. So, you know, it replaces your sight and your, your, your hearing. And it really has the power to transport you into some other place, right? I mean, you can, you can have experience where you're walking on Mars. Uh, you can have experience where you're in a war zone, for, for instance. So it's really quite a powerful thing. Now, taking those two extremes into account, one just lives inside the memory of a computer, and the other one is reality, as we know it. Everything in between is mixed reality. Everything, because everything in between has some kind of mix between digital content and the real world. So if we move this kind of dial in from the physical reality side, and we sort of dial in a little bit, then we get augmented reality. And we start to see things like 2D heads up displays or kind of 2D overlays, like, you know, like Pokemon Go, that kind of thing. As we move further across the continuum, then we see you know, more interaction between the digital and the physical content. So if I have a digital ball, for instance, and I kind of bounce it on a real table, then it will bounce across the table. And as it falls off the other side and rolls along the floor, it will get occluded by the table. So it's really about you know, the interaction there. So if we come in from the other side of the, of the, the continuum, which is virtual reality, and we can do the same thing. So as, as we kind of move in a little bit, uh, we hit this thing called augmented virtuality. It's a bit of a mouthful, but an example of that would be that you can see your real hands inside a virtual reality experience. Okay, and as you move the dial further towards the center, then there's more interaction. So maybe you could use your hands to interact with that content inside that virtual reality experience. So that's what we mean when we talk about mixed reality. So I'm going to try and give you a sense of where HoloLens fits in with the industry, the current market. So if we take um, compute performance along the horizontal axis, so we're going to span from mobile performance all the way over to desktop performance. And then we'll put the reality virtuality continuum on the, on the vertical axis. So we're spanning from virtual reality at the bottom all the way out to physical reality. OK, so all of these experiences on this side, devices, rely on having a desktop computer. So they're all tethered in some way. Um, we've seen kind of uh, consumer releases of 
you know, virtual reality hardware. Um, they, they let you move around in, in a room. They have external sensors. They let you move around inside that space. And it's really driven by the games market. Um, but it, it's expensive. It's expensive to buy the gaming PC that you need. And it's expensive to buy the hardware as well. So moving up to the quadrant above, we move up into mixed reality. So we see some devices up there too. And again, they're tethered to a PC. So let's move over to the other side. Now this is mobile performance. So down in this quadrant, this is where the mass market is. So this is, what I'm talking about here is maybe a cardboard headset with some lenses in, and you pop your smartphone in the front and you can get a, a seated virtual reality experience from that. Uh, that's where most people are going to get their first kind of VR experience. And then if we move up into the other quadrant, this is where the HoloLens lives. It's, again, it's, it's an expensive device. Um, it's niche. It's for commercial use. It's not aimed at the consumer market. But it's a fully untethered PC that you wear on your head, and it enables you to mix reality with your world. So just defocusing on that grid for a second, um, if we, you can kind of imagine where some of the devices on the market fit in, into that. Some of the lines blur a little bit, but all of these manufacturers have their own SDKs. There's some level of fragmentation in that, in that market. And I think really that's the vision for Windows Holographic moving forward. You know, where there is fragmentation, there's always opportunity for some kind of platform, right? And uh, we've seen some announcements around Windows Holographic and there's going to be more coming in December So at WinHEC, so it's worth keeping an eye out for that. Okay, and these ones are, these ones are opaque and the ones at the top are kind of see-through experiences where you're blending stuff with the real world. So let's talk a little bit about the HoloLens itself and what kinds of experiences it can, it can drive and, and you can really have with it. So if we take... If we take the picture up there on your, on your left, the top left, that's really about using 2D apps inside the HoloLens. So you can have experience where you can run all of your favorite UWP apps, um, and you can pin them to, a wall, to walls in your, in your room. So for example, um, in my living room, I could pin a massive Netflix screen. And then in my kitchen, I could pin some kind of recipe app there. So I get this kind of um, you know, hands-free, heads-up display type thing going on. And of course, those apps, th those apps stay where they, where they are. So I can set my house up uh, in such a way that when I enter the room, it's already set up for me. Now consider education for a minute. That's the next picture along there. So what we see here is we see some medical students and they're looking at some parts of the human body there. Now, I think this really has the power to revolutionize this kind of education. Because you can have in front of you a body and you can peel back the skin, you can look at the muscles and you can see how this stuff works under the covers. You can spin it round, you can scale it up. That's a bit more, you know, it's a bit more conducive to learning than looking at the pages of a book. And also you notice from that experience, that picture there, that these students are all having a shared experience which is pretty cool. Let's consider the other, uh, the other picture on there. And this is more about you know, manufacturing and design. So for many years, we've been sort of struggling with um, you know, the creation of 3D assets using essentially 2D paradigms. So if I use, I know some 3D software, I've got a 2D screen and I'm sort of fighting against it to try and build something that I want to be in three-dimensional space. With the HoloLens, you can build that inside three-dimensional space. So it really opens up a world where we no longer have to have this cognitive fight from 2D to 3D. So there's the hardware. Let's talk a little bit about the hardware and what's inside. So when I first got my HoloLens, which was uh, 
I don't know, four to six weeks ago. I, um, th there's an experience you can run on there which allows you to put holograms into your world. So I went to this app and I, I chose a tiger from there, a 3D tiger, and uh, I scaled it up and I pinned it on the end of my bed. So, it's, you know, it's quite an interesting experience having a full-size tiger sitting there on the end of your bed. Um, but as I, as I walked away from it and then I kind of turned around and had, a, had another look, it was still there. Right? And it kind of dawned on me at that point that the HoloLens needs to understand where it is in rotational space and it needs to understand where it is in the world in order to be able to provide that experience and keep those holograms where they are. And that kind of thing is known in the industry as six degrees of freedom tracking. We see that in um, you know, consumer virtual reality using external sensors. But here the HoloLens does that itself. There's no need for external trackers. That's a really kind of tough problem that's been solved by the HoloLens. <clears throat> so the sensors at the top that enable this to happen so there's a depth sensor at the top in the middle. My laser pointer works there. So we have four infrared emitters, two on, two on either side. And then we have these two environment sensing cameras, two on either side there again. So they work together to be able to provide that, that kind of level of inside out tracking. We also have an RGB camera here at the front in the middle. So I can say to my device, hey Cortana, shoot me a video. And uh, it would just start recording a video for me. Or hey Cortana, take a photo. And I think this one is an ambient light sensor. Now the optics, again, this is, um, you know, you can't just go along to the shop and buy this kind, these kind of optics. So there's some transparent lenses which you look, you look through and they, they're the things that enable you to see the holograms mixed into your world. So with all this kind of technology, you need, um, you, know, you know, it kind of relies on having stereoscopic displays, one for each eye, kind of offset by the distance between your eyes. And the HoloLens is no different. So it has two HD projectors, one on either side, one for each eye. And they fire light down into the, um, into the lenses and the light travels through the lenses, bouncing off either side. And when it gets to the pupil, it comes out and it's beamed onto your retina. And your brain does the rest. So with all of these sensors collecting all of this data in real time, there are, you know, with Traditionally, with augmented reality, there's a very, very small latency window. So, if, as an example, you know, if I'm looking at a hologram here and I move my head quickly, if that thing starts to drift, and I'm not getting the image to the eye quick enough, it starts to drift, that really breaks the illusion. So there's a very small window of latency that I, I can hit. So in order to take all that data from those sensors and provide that data to the CPU and the GPU, in a, in a format that it can understand, Microsoft have designed and manufactured a new chip called the Holographic Processing Unit. And it's really designed around those scenarios. And um, it enables uh, kind of gesture tracking and environment sensing and understanding. Okay, next thing, spatial sound. So, on either side of the HoloLens, we have some speakers, and uh, they enable you to hear sounds from emanating th from 3D locations. So if my 3D hologram of a tiger roars, I'll hear the roar from coming from that location. And that works using a technology called head-related transfer functions, which are really kind of audio filters which are designed around knowing you know, things about when the audio hits your ears. So if there's a sound coming from over there, it's going to hit this ear first, right? And maybe momentarily later, hit this ear. And there's a level of, you know, personalization that can be done 
to those head-related transfer functions. And the HoloLens does that too. It, there is some information available to it that it uses to personalize that data. Okay, so how do we sort of develop for HoloLens? Well, all of the apps on the HoloLens are universal Windows platform apps. So if you have an app already in, in the Windows Store, you can go along to the Store portal and you can tick a box which says, makes available on the HoloLens, and then HoloLens users can go to the store and get your app. So they can get your app and they can have an experience with that where they can pin it to the wall and they can resize it. So it appears as like a 2D projection into 3D space. Um, I'll show an example of that in a minute. So as we know, the advantage of using UWP is it hits all of these devices up there, ranging from my you know, tiniest IoT devices all the way up to Surface Hub. And that includes HoloLens in the middle. So if you want to create it, maybe you've got um, you know, a use case which really fits a 2D app, then you can just go along using the tools that you know and love, um, UWP platform, and you can build that and make it available to the HoloLens. Okay, now I really, like, I really love this picture because it shows the thing that I spoke about earlier where you, you know, this lady here is sitting at her desktop and it's a kind of 2D screen and she's working on this 3D, 3D creation and the HoloLens is enabling her to preview that as an actual 3D object there on her desk, which is pretty amazing. As with all new platforms, there's a whole new... Um, you know, there's a whole new way to interact. There are UX paradigms that you need to kind of get, get used to. Not everything is going to be the same as we know. So let's just quick, quickly mention these. And um, in the latter half of the talk, I'm going to go through and build some of this stuff so you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. So you can think of gaze as um, you know, a cursor. So where you look is uh, the thing that you want to interact with. So if I want to interact with that plinth there, I just gaze at it and I'll get a cursor which appears on the plinth. If I want to select the plinth, then I can do a gesture. The HoloLens has a couple of gestures on it. There's the bloom, which is holding your fingers together and releasing like that, like a flower in bloom. And that always takes you back to the home screen. But the way that we select objects is using an air tap. So point to the sky and then tap down. So I can gaze at the plinth, I can do an air tap to select it. In a similar way, I can use voice commands. So I can gaze at the plinth and say select, and that will also select the plinth. Okay, so spatial mapping. Now, the HoloLens is continually scanning its environment and understanding the, the mesh around it. And you can get that mesh and use that inside your applications. Uh, spatial sound, we spoke about a minute ago, but it's very useful to, you know, if you're looking in this direction and you want to have the user look at something which may be behind them or over there, then you can use spatial sound in order to guide the user to look in the right place. And then we also have the concept of world coordinates. As we said, the, the HoloLens knows where it is in the world. So you can pin a hologram in space, and when you come back to that space, hologram's still there. You can go off a couple of weeks, come back, and it's still there. Okay, so a bit about the sort of layering of the software, just so you understand how this, this stuff is laid out. So all of those six things that I mentioned are part of the Windows holographic platform. Sitting on a layer above that is the Holo, the Holo Toolkit, which is an open source project. You can go along there uh, to GitHub, and you can go look at the source code for that. And that gives you um, things that you can use inside Unity when you're building holographic apps. So... Unity has this concept of prefabs, which where it can model up, uh, package up models and scripts. And uh, you can get a lot of things done by using the holographic toolkit and kind of dragging things into Unity. And I'll show you some examples of that in the next section. As a layer on top of that, and this is really about customizing your experience in your app build. So we've got things like models, textures, shaders. Now, if you're a traditional 2D app developer, 
maybe you don't have the skills or you know you, you don't know what these things are traditionally a kind of game development scenarios teams inside game game development houses will typically have you know a couple of 3d artists as maybe a sound designer a couple of programmers and they're the kind of uh, teams that you need to build holographic apps but um, you can start with a 2D app and you can extend it. So there is a path from a 2D app to a holographic app. So you can extend a little part of it. So when you press on the button inside your 2D app, then there's a feature which has holographic capabilities. And then you can switch back to the 2D app again. OK, so as we mentioned, 2D apps, just what you know already, Visual Studio, you know, file new UWP project. You can build those in C Sharp or VB. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then holographic apps. So again, they're UWP. They're based on UWP. Um, but the, the development tool maybe of choice, I would say, is Unity. Uh, how many people are familiar with Unity here? OK, not that many. So when I do my demos in a bit, I'm going to try and uh, <laughs> you know, do some explaining around, around what the things are that you're seeing on the screen. Um, you can build these things with C++ and DirectX or C Sharp and DirectX. And uh, if you want to go and install the tools, then you can go and get Visual Studio. Um, you can get the, the UWP platform SDK. And uh, then you can install the, Hol the HoloLens emulator. OK, and when you install the HoloLens emulator, you get some project templates for C++ and DirectX. So if that's your thing, then you can do it that way. Most people build these apps using Unity. And that's what I'm going to do today. OK, so you know, there, there are some requirements, as you can see on the screen. Uh, but if you've got a decent modern laptop, um, it probably fits the bill. OK, so now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to do a demo of building just a two-dimensional app. We're going to run it on the HoloLens emulator. So I'm using Visual Studio Enterprise, but you, know, you can use the free version. There's nothing here that's, that costs any money to get started. So I'm going to create a blank universal app. Let's just select all of the, excuse me, the defaults. And Visual Studio will spin up the files I need for the project. How many UWP developers do we have in here? OK, one or two. There's not that many there. So I'll, I'll try to explain this stuff as I, as I move through. So this is a UWP app. It's, it's a, just basically a blank app. And um, the user interface technology is XAML. So um, it's kind of like XML-like language, which defines user interface elements. So let's open up the main page. In fact, there's only one page in this app. So I can start editing down here. And I can add in like um, a text block. Let's give it a font size 64. And let's do a little bit of alignment. So we'll align horizontally and vertically in the center. And let's say the path to mixed reality. So the designer will show me that in the design view. And uh, that's an amazing app, I know, I know. Hold the applause. Um, what this is showing me is, uh, is the designer is showing me a view what this would look like on a five inch phone. What I can do is I can drop down this little box here and I can select a HoloLens 2D app. So it's going to show me what this will look like on a 57 inch 2D app at, let's check the scale, a 150% scale and a fixed resolution. So when you, when you um, run this app on the HoloLens, 
and you resize it. It doesn't do. It doesn't change scale and resolution, so you can't do that kind of um, you know responsive design. It will just scale up and scale down. Okay, so let's just switch over to that. So that's what my app's going to look like. And in order to run it, I'm going to choose the HoloLens emulator. And I'm going to start the app. And it'll, it'll compile the code and deploy it to the HoloLens emulator. And uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at the HoloLens emulator. So I've got it running already on the desktop. OK, so that's the emulator. And it's got some kind of nice, quite nice tools along with it. I can provide values for simulation, um, in, input values. I can change the room that I'm in. So if I want to load a different room, I can come in here, choose from like bedroom, bedrooms and guest rooms, living rooms, that kind of thing. And as with all UWP platforms, we have this thing called a device portal, which enables you to get access to the device. And, uh, you know, service hub IoT devices, they all have this. This is served up by the, by the device. In this case, by the emulator. This one's kind of um, customized to a HoloLens. So it has, it's quite nice features actually. It has this 3D view. So I can see through there what the HoloLens is seeing. And I can update the spatial mapping and it will then render the kind of room, the, the mesh around the room that it's seeing. Some quite nice features there. And if, if you have, um, if you have a real HoloLens device, you can take, uh, you can capture your own room, and you can capture it as a model and kind of bring it into here. You can also do something called mixed reality capture. So what this enables is that you can record videos of what you're seeing through the HoloLens. So that will include a video of the real world mixed with your digital content as well, the holograms. I'll show you an example of that in a minute because I've, I've recorded a few clips. Um, but th there are various different stuff you can do in here. You can install apps, you can uninstall them, and this, this is all driven by a REST API. So you can do all this stuff programmatically as well. Okay, so hopefully my 2D app has launched, and there it is inside the emulator. Now, everywhere you see in the emulator that it's black, the HoloLens will actually show the real world through there. So I'm just going to tap that, and I'm going to pin this, this out there for a second. But um, because of that black background, it's quite difficult to see what's going on. So I've, I've recorded a little video to show you exactly how that, how that works on the HoloLens. So I've recorded this using mixed reality capture. This is not my house, by the way. This is a Microsoft apartment. My house isn't this tidy. So there, you notice when I'm, I'm moving the app around the room, it sort of hugs the wall as I go. And I can decide to pin it against the wall. And once it's pinned, I can then resize the app. And if I don't like it there, I can just pick it up and drag it over here. And notice the way it sort of hugs the mesh of the wall. And if you like that kind of giant Netflix experience, then we can kind of, uh, you know, we can scale it all the way up and get that full view. OK, so simple. That's just a 2D app, 2D UWP app. You don't need Unity for that. So let's now look at holographic apps and see how they work. Um, I'm going to use Unity because using DirectX would be a bit difficult for me to kind of demo, demo to you here. So let's take Gaze as the first example. So I'm going to switch over to Unity. Now, I've already done a little bit of pre-configuration here, so let me tell you what I've done. Well, actually, for, before I do that, let me tell you about what you're seeing here. This is Unity. It, it's um, a game runtime and a game editor. And what we're looking at now is the game editor. So I can create 3D scenes in here, and I have a preview at the top. And I can kind of orbit around here and I can add 3D elements into that scene. So when I add them into the scene, I'm just going to zoom in for a second, I have a scene graph down here, which shows me a hierarchical view of what's in my scene. At the moment, I've just got a camera and a light. 
If I go over to the next panel, this is my project panel. Now, um, I can bring models in, into here. I can bring textures into here. I can bring all of my assets in. I just kind of drag and drop them into that panel. So, for example, if I want to create a 3D model, I can use um, some kind of software like Blender is the one that I use. It's kind of free 3D modeling software. And I can export the model as a .fbx file, and I can just drag it into this project. And that's what I've done for this demo. So I'll show you that in a second. Now, zoom out. And if I select objects in the scene graph, then on the right-hand side, you can see the inspector. Now, the inspector has all of the properties of the, of the selected object, but also I can, I, can extend this, I can extend these objects, so I can add components. So let's just bring up that dialog. And... That. So the types of components that I can bring in are kind of, I can add physics to these components, to these game objects. I can add audio, I can change the rendering. And that's the sort of thing I can do, do inside by adding components. It's Unity's way to extend objects. Now, what I can also do is I can add scripts. And those scripts can be written in C Sharp. So we, can, we have full customization over, over our game objects in that, in that way. So, as I said, I've created some um, models before time. So I'm just going to drag one into the scene. Notice I'm dragging it from the project panel, and I'm just going to drop it into the scene there. And we've got some giant icons being drawn now. I'm just going to make those a bit smaller. And you see there, that we, what we have is we have a stack of bottles sitting on top of a future decoded plinth. So I literally just created this in some 3D software and I've exported it to FBX and brought it into here. So what we want to do now is we want to implement gaze. So the first thing I'm going to need is a cursor. Now, before time, I've imported the HoloLens toolkit. So I've got all the functionality of that toolkit I've got at my disposal. Uh, the holo holographic toolkit contains a cursor, so I'm just going to go to it and, and drag the cursor into my scene. And you can search for objects using this handy search tool. So I find a basic cursor, and I'm just going to drag that into the root of my scene. And if you're interested to see what that looks like, we can get a little preview down there. And you can see it's like, just like a blue disk. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to position that blue disk where the user's gazing. And again, I'm going to go to the holographic toolkit and it has some, a script in it which enables me to do just that. And it's called the Gaze Manager. So it's a common pattern in Unity to, uh, you know, if you want to organize code and scripts, is to, you can create an empty game object in here and I'm just going to call this managers, and I'm going to apply scripts into that managers object. And that means that that code will get executed at runtime. So let's find the gaze manager again. If I could spell, that is. There we go. So I'm just going to drag, drag that script, and it's a C sharp script. I'm just going to drag that on top of the managers object. So the way that this works is that the, uh, the gaze manager will fire out an um, array directly where your head is pointing, and um, it will keep a track of which object it, that ray is hitting. And then there is a script on the basic cursor which uses that information from the gaze manager and positions that kind of blue disk in the right place. So we can run this inside. Um, actually, just before I do that, I am going to add something called a manual camera, and I'm just going to add that to my main camera so that I don't have to switch out to the HoloLens emulator. I can just use this nice preview inside Unity to run my code inside there. Uh, 
Uh, what I did, what I failed to do was change the camera. So the default camera in a Unity scene is not set up right for the HoloLens. So let's delete that camera and go back to the Holo Toolkit and take the camera from there. And I need to drag my manual camera back onto that. Oops. Okay, so you can see from this preview here that it has changed uh, the background to black. And as I said before, the same way the emulator works, this is where you will see the real world. So let's run that. So now I can move around with the mouse, much the same way as I would do with the HoloLens, it's just rotating my head. And you can see that the gaze cursor is kind of hugging the, the model that, that, it, that I'm looking at. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? So that's gaze. Now I mentioned before that then if you want to select an object, you can use gesture. So, so let's put gesture into that scene too. So back to Unity. And Unity has another handy script called the Gesture Manager. So I'm going to drag that onto my manager's game object. And what that's going to do is when, when I do the air tap, it's going to send an on-select message to the object that you're gazing at. So as an example, if I want to knock down one of these bottles, then I can gaze at the bottle, tap it, and the bottle will need a script on it which has an on-select method. So let's just check that we have those. So I'm just going to take a look on the bottle, and I find on there that I've got a bottle script. So I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio. And I'm going to edit the bottle script. Bottle script. So inside here, notice we've got some code nicely <laughs> handily commented out. Um, which I'm going to uncomment as we go. So what we do is we get the, um, the information about the hit point from the gaze manager, and we're going to apply a physical impulse to the bottle in the opposite direction of the gaze. So when I switch back to Unity, Unity will recompile those changes I've just made, and then I can run again inside the, um, the game preview I can run that again. Okay, so I can move around. And that should have knocked the bottle over, so maybe I've made a mistake here somewhere. Let's give me a second. So what I'll do, instead of trying to find that obvious error that I made, I, I recorded some mixed reality capture of showing exactly that. Again, back in the Microsoft department. So you see the hologram floating there, and as I gaze around, the gaze cursor moves. When I do the air tap, then the bottle get, gets knocked over, right? Pretty simple. So let's move on to voice commands. So this is going to be the same story, right? I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to the Holo Toolkit and I'm going to get a script from there and I'm going to apply it to my scene. So we have one in here called the Keyword Manager. So let's just drag that into the scene and I'll zoom in a little bit and we can see what that does for us. 
So I can make this array size one and it will ask me for an element. So I can give Unity a keyword here that I want it to listen, listen for. And I'm going to call it reset stack. What I can then do is I can associate another game object with that and tell it which function to call on that game object. Okay, and it, it's just it's literally as simple as that. So I'm going to drag my stacked bottles over there. So now that script has a reference to my stacked bottles object. And I'm going to choose a function to call. And I have one here handily called reset bottles. So I'm going to call that. And interestingly, I can have this work in the editor and the runtime or the runtime only. Let's choose editor and runtime. Now, again, I want to show you this in the mixed reality capture just because it's more effective. I really don't want to hear the sound of my stack. voice. Reset stack. Okay, so we move on to spatial mapping. Now we said that the HoloLens is continually kind of um, you know, scanning your environment and making an understanding it has a mesh which you can use in your scene. So let's try and implement that. So again, inside the Holo Toolkit, we have a spatial mapping prefab. If we just drag that in, that will take care of rendering the spatial map. So if I were to run this now, it, you would just see um, you know, a wireframe rendering of everything that I'm kind of looking at as, as I glance around. And um, I should say about the spatial mapping that, that it, it's kind of continually running in the background. And um, so if I were to look here with my HoloLens on, then it's going to take a map of this, the whole surface of this table. If I come along and move this bottle, two, three seconds later, then it will smooth over that that mesh. So it's always continually running in the background. What I would like to do in here is not just render the mesh, I want to have the mesh occlude objects. So that if something goes behind, say I've got a chair here, and the mesh forms the surface of the chair, if I knock something behind that chair, I want it to be occluded from my vision. It really adds to the Kind of illusion that that thing really is in the world. So what I can do is I can add a spatial mapping renderer, and it's literally as simple as that. I mean, there are other settings on there you can use to control it. I'm not going to look at those now. I can just add that, and it will work. Another interesting element that I can add in here is that I can tell. I can tell this spatial mapping object to use a particular room. So I scanned, I scanned my front room with a, with a HoloLens and I exported it as a 3D model. And I've got it in, in here in the assets. So I'm just going to drag it in. And then Unity will use that as the spatial mesh. Okay, so let's switch back and have a look and see what that looks like in uh, Mixed Reality Capture. So we're kind of gradually, gradually building up the realism of the scene. Okay, so back again with the hologram. And as notice as I look around, you will start to see the mesh building up on the surface of the kitchen there and the sofas. <coughs> then as I knock the bottles over, they don't just fall through the floor. Right? We're using the Unity physics system to 
do collisions against that mesh. Really adds another level of um, you know realism. Spatial sound. Let's see how we how we can do that. So I've got a couple of um, sound clips in here. We've got this kind of street organ, which is uh, like he's in the scene as stop that. I'm going to use that in the scene as kind of ambient sound, which is attached to the plinth and the bottles. So if you move those around, then you'll hear audio coming from, from that location. Also got another clip in here, which is the sound, if you heard that, the sound of a bottle chinking. Don't know what I'm going to do with that one. So all that we need to do is we can pick up the street organ and we can just drop it. I've uh, dropped it on the spatial mapping. I don't really want to do that. So let's delete that. What I wanted to do was drop it on the stacked bottles object. When I do that, Unity will create me an audio source. So I need to configure that audio source a little bit. And now the first thing I need to do is I need to come into the project settings find the audio settings and make sure that I'm using the Microsoft Head Related Transfer Function Spatializer, which kind of um, integrates into Unity as a plugin. So once I have that set, I can come back to my stack bottles and let's have a look and see what settings we've got inside this audio source. The first thing I need to do is I need to tell Unity to spatialize the audio. And then what we can do is we, we can take the spatial blend. There's a slider there which slides from 2D to 3D. We need to take that all the way over to the, to the 3D side. And so as far as spatial sound goes, that's it. But I'm going to add some sounds. To, I'm going to add the bottle chink to the bottles as well. Now, ahead of time, I have done that. And so I already have an audio source on here. So if I switch back to the bottle script, then I can get a reference to that audio source inside the bottle script. So that's what I'm going to do there. I'm just going to uncomment that line. And when we get the on select message, which happens when we tap, I'm just going to randomize the pitch of that audio and play it. And also, using the power of um, Unity physics simulation, I'm also going to play the sound when there's a collision between that bottle and something else. So maybe it, maybe it hits the other bottles, or maybe it just falls on the floor. It's going to make a sound. And we're just going to randomize the pitch of that a little bit to make it more realistic. Put that in as well. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like now. So back over to the apartment. I'm not sure if it's coming through the speakers, whether that's being spatialized or not, but it's, when you have the HoloLens device on, it's really extremely effective and you, you hear the sounds from where they're emanating from. The last thing I want to talk about is world coordinates. As we said earlier, the HoloLens knows where it is in the world, and I can make use of that inside my app. So I can get, you know, I can get hold of anchor points against those world coordinates, and I can store them against an object, and I, then I can retrieve them. So next time my app runs, those holograms are still in the same place. So I'm just going to play back the mixed reality, reality capture in the interest of time. But then, you know, the program model is pretty much the same. It's this kind of drag and drop style and then setting some properties. 
So it's, it's quite accessible, it's quite easy to get, you know, to get in there and start creating some of these things. So let me just explain what's happening here. So when I tap on the base of the plinth, then the whole stack of bottles becomes my cursor and it will move around the room and it will hug the, the spatial mesh. You can see that happening there. So, um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to place it somewhere. So I could place it on the table, I can place it on the sofa. So the next time I tap, the object will get placed. Not quite sure why I took so long to place that one, but we'll get there in a second. Okay, so I've done the tap to place. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock over those bottles. And I'm gonna to step to one side and notice this bottle. Notice the way it gets occluded by that chair. Really kind of, kind of adds to the realism of that scene. Okay, so if you wanna get started, you can go to aka.ms, HoloLens Dev Tools. You can get all the tools from there. Or there is a set of training videos at the Holographic Academy. And I've been through all of these. They're brilliant videos. They really kind of set you on the path to HoloLens development with holographic apps. There is a full application called the Galaxy Explorer where you can have a galaxy there in your front room and you can scale it up and down and you can zoom into the planets and get kind of information about those planets. And that shows how to do user interface and, and that kind of thing on there. So if you want to see um, you know, a, a more realistic demo, then that's a good place to go and have a look. My demo's there, FD Hollow demo. And if you want to learn more about the device, you can go along to hollowlens.com. And then there's also forums. And I, I know that the project teams hang out on those forums. Um, so there's a lot of interest around there. So if you've got any technical problems or questions, nip along to the forums. And you know, of course, you can go along to the Holo Toolkit if you, if you find bugs in there. You can, you can submit issues and you can submit pull requests to that kind of thing. The team will have a look at those and accept them. So thanks for coming. Thanks for your time. I hope that was useful. Um, I'm Pete Dukintis. I'm working with this on HoloLens with my colleague, Mike Tolte. So if you've got any particular problems, then you can drop us a line, either me or Mike. We're, we love talking about this stuff. So um, I'm going to be around all day. So if you want to have a chat about something around HoloLens, please come and find me, and I'm happy to answer all your questions. Okay, thank you very much.